The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Messy Mike. Let's talk barbecue. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio One Podcast Cafe. It's the Pit Life Barbecue, where we talk everything barbecue and a lot of other stuff you talk about around the pit. As not always, but I'm joined by John Mags McGuire today via video. Is he there? Hi, buddy. What's going on? Nothing. Just got in the truck, just leaving the hospital, just got out of surgery. Yep. So. You feeling good? Not bad. You okay. know, didn't exactly know what to expect, but, you know, if this is the, well, I'm probably still hopped up on all the stuff, so all the good pain and stuff will kick off later. But. Yep. Nice. Well, you look good. You look good. <laughs> so I thought, I didn't think uh, you were going to be on the show today. Um, so I was kind of excited to have the seat to myself, but um, I figured we'd talk about some um, grill uh, barbecue logs. And not, you know, not the logs that you throw in the actual fire pit, but, um, you know, keeping a log of all your cooks and, uh, you know, why you keep a log and, and stuff like that. What do you think? Sounds good to me. All right. Ed, what do you think? I would be thrilled with that. I'm glad you clarified logs. I had different thoughts, but now I understand. Okay. <laughs> and, I mean, how many people out there do you think keep log books of all their cooks? I'd probably say not, not many. Um, but it's, it's probably one of the most important aspects of grilling, barbecuing, you know, smoking, um, you know, just cause there's so many variables out there. Um, you know, you want to keep a, a log of, of pretty much everything from, you know, the actual meat itself, um, you know, the grade of meat, the weight of the meat you're cooking, uh, where you bought it, um, you know, how you prepare it and all that comes into play um, because, you know, you got choice, you got prime, you got select, uh, you got your Wagyu, um, and, you know, the, the fattiness or the, the marbling, um, you know, is different in every meat. So you want to keep a log book because it'll cook differently each time. Um, and same thing with the, you know, same thing with the weight. You know, you buy a piece of meat um, and you want to you wanna have all your cooks the same. You know, you want to you want to be um, you want to have all your cooks the same. You want you want consistency. So that's where the log book comes in. You know, you want to make sure that all right, I did a twelve pound pork butt or a brisket. You know, this time, um, all right, now you can go back to the log book and you know, kind of go back over. Okay, I did a you know fourteen pound you know brisket or pork butt this time, and it took this many hours. Um, so it's it's it's. A reference guide. Um, also, you know, what rubs and sauces um, that you like to use because all, obviously rubs act differently. Um, same thing with sauces, depending on the ingredients that's in them. Um, so, you know, whether you get, you know, a lot of bark on one cook or you don't get much bark on another cook, you know, it could be the rub. Um, it could also be, you know, the smoke that you're putting into it. Um, but, I mean, a log book is just, it's, it's a great tool. Um, and just a reference guide to, you know, to get the best cooks and the consistency every time. Right? Right. Yeah. Um, as, you know, as far as I would imagine, um, you know, when you had said that, you know, not a lot of people um, have a, keep a log book, mm -hmm. you, you, you'd think a lot of the, the professional competitors competition guys do oh 100 percent. you know then you got you know really some hardcore guys you know i do um because just like you were saying you know it, you can go back and look at what you did in in a past cook you probably you know if i have a 10 pound boston butt you know okay what did i do the last time okay you know and, and even go in as deep as, you know, weather conditions, time of day, you know, oh, I, I did this one. It was, you know, 90 degrees and humid. 
and you know today it's you know 75 and sunny beautiful you know that can change you know like we had always said that the weather can you know play games with you a little bit so you know it's nice as a reference point yep and the weather's a huge factor back. right and oh yeah i think a key with the weather is what the wind was too depending on how your smoker is situated wind can make a big difference 100 percent. yep i've had i mean i've been on um you know, events where, you know, the, the, I had my smoker lined up and it was, I didn't really have many options, but the wind, you know, where you set up the smoker, it was like a wind tunnel. So it was hard to control the heat. Um, plus sometimes where you set up, you know, you might have where, you know, like I, there there was one instance where I couldn't even get the smoker past 165, you know, um, and I didn't have a logbook with me, but it wasn't the weather. It was actually the um, probes, the thermometer probe. Huh. So that wasn't, you know, you know and that's, needed to be cleaned. That's an interesting point you make because for you, the smoker is somewhere else every time you're exactly. using it. So yep. you, you almost need an orientation, right? Okay, the front of the smoker is pointing north mm-hmm. and the winds are coming from this direction. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. And, and even... Um, Sorry about that. You owe Johnny a beer. <laughs> I owe Johnny a beer. <laughs> still, Even if I'm not there, you still don't change. It all goes off. But, Johnny, you got a beer out of it. <coughs> oh, yeah. And, and um, also the, the weather itself. Um, you know, if it's 105 degrees out, then, you know, your smoker is going to be hotter than um, you think. Oh, absolutely. And same thing, vice versa, cold. And, you know, and that's the other thing. If you have a big, you know... Um, you know, a big smoker, um, and you're you're heating that up for the first time in the winter. You're going to see it. Basically, it's going to be crying. You know, it's all the moisture is going to be sucking out of the smoker, and that's going to you know it's going to take a while to heat up, and and you know that that affects things as well. So you know, keeping a logbook is it's probably it's going to be your best friend until you get to the point that you know you're you're doing consistent barbecue all the time. Hey. Johnny, are you shaking or are you going over bumps? I'm going over bumps with where. Uh, what are you off roading? <laughs> it looks off road <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're driving now. Nice. But, oh, man. Oh. And it's dark out. It's dark out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bumps causing you some discomfort yeah. there, Johnny? I don't know if it's the bumps or the look to looking at the screen, but. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm. Uh, I think I'm gonna uh, leave this up to you here, Mike. Uh, I, I I feel like I'm gonna uh, throw up. Lo- lose my contents. Yep. So you're gonna throw up. Oh, yeah. Okay. I will talk to you later on. I I, I gave it a shot, boys. Hey, you were, <laughs> you were here. It counts, Johnny. <laughs> All right. But that could be good. That could be good. Uh, video. Oh yeah, that'll be real good. Let me puke up everything I had, <laughs> which is nothing except a little bag of goldfish after the surgery. But nice. All right. All right. I figured I'd give it a shot, but this ain't going to fucking happen. All right. Well, good luck. Woo. Glad you made right, an appearance. Brother. Hang up. So he's just going to be on there. So that's fine. <laughs> So where were we? Um, and even with the, the log book, even with the wood, um, mm. you know, are you using logs? Are you using chunks? Are you using chips? Right. What kind um, of wood? What kind of wood? Is it green? the flavor. Mm-hmm. Is it seasoned? Is it not seasoned? Um, you know, I like to use wood that's at least seasoned for about two years. Hmm. Um, it's very dry. It burns nice. But again, you got some people that like greener woods, you know, depending right. on what they're smoking. Um, now, if the wood is that dry, then you soak it or no? Um, if you're using, like, some people soak chunks, some a lot of people soak chips. Right, um, but if you're using When I'm doing logs, full logs, yeah. no, because the way you're setting up your fire pit, um, kind of what I like to do is you, you know, get a little, um, get your charcoal going, yep. put that in the center of your, your fire pit, and then I put, I'll put two logs, two logs kind of like, um, like, mon- like a numbers symbol, yep. kinda like a phone. Um, right, so you stack them. Yep. Uh, what is that? Not parallel, perpendicular. Perpendicular on top. So, yes. And then they, there's more air circulation and all of that. Yep. There's good airflow. Um, and then also your logs aren't gonna you know go nuts burning. 
Um, and then, you know, obviously you'll add logs when you need it. Um, but I mean, the, the, the cooking log has come, has been a big help for, for myself. Um, mostly just because when I'm, when I do pigs, Mm. you know, when I do pigs, each pig is different depending on, you know, like the baconista said, depending on, you know, the breed and all that stuff. Um, and do do you see any difference in how easy it is to control the heat with logs versus chunks, or that's really more making um, sure the ventilation is right? It's more your smoker. Yeah, you know, if you know your smoker and you're you you know you know the venting process, um, any smoker is pretty easy to control temp with. Yeah. Um, usually, you want to get your smoker going to about you know two twenty five, two fifty, whatever, um, and then. I'll usually throw the logs on after that and then let those go. Um, and then once it gets to the temperature, I can pretty much close every vent except the top, like a little, you know, mm-hmm. just a little opening. And that'll go for about, you know, six hours beautifully. So it's not bad. Not too bad at all. No. And, you know, what's... uh. What's your feeling on how long you really need smoke on the meat, right? Um, so smoke doesn't penetrate meat after, um, I want to say 160, 160 degrees. Right. Smoke stops penetrating the meat. So that's why a lot of people will wrap at like 160, 165. Sure. Um, some people wrap at like 145. Yeah. Um, but then you have the stall. So some people like to get past the stall before they wrap. Um, yeah. But yeah, you don't want to, anything, you know, 160, then it's just basically an oven. Yep. Um, and, and now, on a really cold day, mm-hmm. once I get to that point, are you opposed to me wrapping it and finishing it indoors? No. It shouldn't make any difference at that point. Um, no. I, when I've done that before, yeah. and what I feel is, I mean, the meat comes out somewhat the same, I just feel that the air circulation in a smoker is a little better than your oven. Yep. Um, but you're wrapped, so it's not going to really, you know, make a big difference. You're just you're just finishing the product. Right. But something about it feels wrong, almost like cheating. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. But yeah, I mean. I have no problem finishing stuff in the oven. Um, and even like these, the, all these apps now, the applications, mm-hmm. um, I mean, they have applications now where they're, you know, you're hooking up to your, your thermometer, your temp probes, yeah. your, you know, your different devices where you can just read it right on your phone. Right. Um, those are very useful. Um, I mean, they have an app now. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> an, an app that makes noises. <laughs> an app that makes your phone, yeah. Um, I mean, they have an app now that, tells you it's the barbecue tank meter and it will tell you how much propane is left in your tank really which yeah that's pretty i mean it's pretty crazy but um it measures propane levels acoustically and then displays the amount in a graph really? in so a graph you, on your phone you put something on the tank that then makes noises that probably you don't even hear and- yeah i mean it, it's it's crazy and it's um I mean, it's $2.50 via Android, um, hmm. but I, I'm pretty sure it's made for the iPhone as well. But how many people, you know, you got all your ingredients ready, you got your meat ready to go, <laughs> you're going out there to, to grill or whatever, yeah. um, and you run out of propane. Right, because normally you're just doing that by feel. feels like exactly. I have enough. Yep, <laughs> yep. And how do you know? Like, that's what's horrible, too, because how do you know, Right. you know, if you have a 20-pound tank or like Blue Rhino, um, I think they're 15-pound tanks. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you can pick it up, but you never know how much is in there or if it's going to last the whole cook. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's horrible because I've, I've been there where, you know, you, you're cooking stuff and you're like, oh, yeah, I got enough propane. And you go to bed and you come back and you're like, I need propane, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we, we should probably hit some more apps after the break. Sure. We will be right back after these words. Attention cigar smokers, or even friends of a cigar smoker. If you're looking to relax with a nice premium cigar or looking for a great gift for a cigar smoker, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Our friends at TwoGuysCigars.com have created the Cigar of the Month Club. 
For just $24.99 per month, you or your friend will receive four different premium handmade cigars every month. And shipping and handling is included. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and go to the Cigar of the Month Club. You can stop anytime because there's no contract, but you won't because this is a tremendous deal for our listeners. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and click the Cigar of the Month Club. At the same time, if you want to learn about the cigars you receive each month, you can smoke along with them on their own podcast called The Cigar Authority. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a nice premium cigar from our friends at twoguyscigars.com. And we're back. How are you? <laughs> I'm still good. How, good. How Excellent. about yourself? Uh, excellent. Um, and to go back to the log books, um, you can find those on um, meathead.com. You can find them on amazingribs.com. Um, Steve Reichlin, uh, he actually has a log book as well. Um, so you can download if you don't want to make your own right. and then, logs. Then that'll give you some guidelines of what people normally log, right? It'll have all the information that you should be writing down. Yep, correct. And um, before I forget, too, because this just came to my head, um, uh, amazing, I believe it's amazingribs.com. Um, they have a checklist. It's called a competition checklist, but it's a it's a checklist for competition. So, you know, if you're doing a barbecue competition, it has every single piece of equipment, um, gadget, whatever that you're going to need for the competition. So I... I always, um, before every event, I always print one of those out, go down the list, you know, make sure I have everything. Um, but it's a great tool um, for even the backyard guy or, or whatever, you know, just to make sure you have everything. Yep. It's um, always worth taking the time to just go through, make sure it's all there rather than in a panic. Yep. Oh, where am I going to get Where's my this? spritz? Where's my, you know. <laughs> where, yep. where am I going to find that at 4.30 in the morning? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, oh, and. Sorry, I'm just trying to be like John right now. Um, <laughs> uh, Mike C. Um, so he sent me some barbecue sauce. Um, it's, it's it was a sample of barbecue sauce, and uh, I tried it on some some steak last night um, as a marinade. Marinated the steak for two days. Um, the sauce was fantastic. Hmm. So I just wanted to let him know what, that. What kind of sauce was it? Uh, it's a it's a barbecue. It's a barbecue sauce. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it it almost tastes like there's some apple butter in it. Hmm. Um, but it's, it's a little sweet. It's kind of a distinct flavor. Um, I would say it's better as a marinade compared to a barbecue sauce, right. um, or it's a, or it's a barbecue sauce slash marinade. Um, but it was, it was excellent. It had nice balance to it. Um, it smelled nice. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, hmm. let him know that I did try it and it was good. Yeah, one one um, of the commenters in the chat room said, is John rambling? I think he's on pain meds. Yeah, I think, I think so. <laughs> and he's not used to taking pain meds either. So. No. <laughs> um, and uh, Ian from the Custom Cutting Boards Are Us sent me the 35-inch cutting board that I mentioned um, last show. I tried it out. Um, I tested it out. If you're looking for a cutting board... Yeah. Um, it come, they come in different sizes, 35 inches. It's made for the caterer. Yeah. Um, that's a big, unless board. you have a big sink yeah. or you're washing stuff outside. Um, but he has all different sizes, some different colors, but it's, it is the best cutting board I've ever well, tried. Maybe you need to bring it one. Of We're going to, um, so he's going to be on off. the show next week. Oh, awesome. so he's going to be on the show next week. We're going to bring the cutting board in. He's going to have a couple, um, smaller cutting boards oh, to nice. show. Um, but <laughs> It's the quality, um, the sturdiness, the drip pan that's around it. Um, oh yeah, I I love having something yeah. to catch all the. Yep, and I mean, and with me, you know, you're you're cooking on different surfaces every, you know, <laughs> every time. Yeah. So when you're cutting a brisket, even though you have a cutting board, you right. might not be in level ground. No, it so, might be balanced on anything you can find. Yep. So when you're cutting it, you know the. The grease or you know drippings is still is still coming on the table or whatever. And if it's the wrong the angle, ground, it's coming all over you. Exactly, if, if or the you driveway don't. if you're on someone's oh, yeah. driveway, which <laughs> you know I hate that. Um, but this thing is is beautiful, and it's got um, pegs on the bottom, so it doesn't slide around. Nice, which is really nice because if you're on like a you know a, a six foot you know okay, I'm, folding I'm table, I'm interested. I'm going to be checking that out next week. And um, Ian, he'll be on the show next week. 
Yeah, because um, even I imagine even a, a smaller size for kitchen use. Yes, it's a good board. Hundred percent, hundred percent. It's it'll it will be the last cutting board that you buy. Oh, Guaranteed. I'm very interested in yep. next week. And it cleans well, you know, and that's another thing. Yeah, they, they suck at cleaning sometimes. Oh yeah, I mean, <coughs> so, some of them you'll uh, you cut something on the board and think. Okay, this can never be clean again. Exactly. <laughs> you scrub it, but somehow it becomes a part of your cutting board. Right. And then if you bring that to an event, you yeah, know, now people are like, what are you using? He's using a dirty, dirty cutting board, board for right. Jesus. <laughs> um, but sorry to go off on a tangent. Um, back to the apps, though. Um, another great app is uh, the Pit Pal. So the Pit Pal is basically um, for the people that like, you know, gadgets. It, it, it basically takes it takes stats um, to track temperatures, um, you know, and also it tracks mopping if you're adding coal or adding wood, saucing, foiling, whatever. So it's it's almost like a log in an app form. So which is nice, exactly. Yep. You know, and you so- can and if and if you want the pro version of the app, it costs a little money, um, but it actually it it makes you have the ability to download it or, right. um, you know, print it or share it, whatever. For something like that, my concern would be it's giving me too much data, mm-hmm. right? I'd probably only want it at a certain interval, mm-hmm. right? Because if you go back later and you got to go through a giant list of data, it's not as simple to do. Exactly, exactly. I think, I mean, I, I just love the barbecue tank meter thing. I mean, that's, that's, that's just that's genius. That's a winner for you. <laughs> yes, 100%. And... I mean, I guess a lot of the people who are selling probes have apps these days too, right? For yep, most most of the probes come with a you know um, Bluetooth yep. capability to your phone or computer, tablet, whatever, um, and then they have graphs and and charts as well. well. And somebody must be doing Wi-Fi ones now too, right? Because yeah, I who- think Weber. Yeah, because with the Bluetooth, right, mm-hmm. you might want to go in the house and still keep an eye on it, right? <laughs> and uh, it's not necessarily going to work with Bluetooth because yep. of the range. Yeah, I think uh, the Weber has the eye grill, I believe it is. Mm. Um, and that's I think that's Wi-Fi capable. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of these gadgets also, they, they act as a log book yep. all, as well. Um, so, you know, if you're using one of those and all your, your data is going to be right in front of you anyway. Yep. So it's, it's, it's working the it's- same. What was that app uh, one of the guests had? Was it for ventilation or um, Hoppy's Cantina? Oh, um, Sean Hopkins had um, Barbecue Guru. Yeah. App. Um, the Barbecue Guru is a it's a device that you put on um, your grill and it it, it keeps it, the temperature. So the it there's regulate, a fan in it. Yep. Uh, so if if it senses that the temperature is coming down or whatever, mm-hmm. um, it's going to kick a fan on and it's going to bring that temperature right. back up. So that's the difference between something that's just passive monitoring and mm-hmm. something where you can actively change the the grill or the smoker while you're on the app, right? Correct. And I believe you can actually change the uh, um, temperature as well via mm-hmm. you know your phone or whatever. So if you wanted to boost the temperature a little bit, you could um, with with those with the barbecue guru and so stuff like I, that. When I'm cold and sitting in my house, I can still play around. You can with still it. play around. Oh, with I it. like that. You shouldn't play with your meat though. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> oh, thanks, John. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, <clears throat> but they all they like the meter. Um, the meter is a great. Uh, it's a brand new thermometer. Um, and it's not as good as the thermopen yet, mm-hmm. but it's a it's a Wi-Fi enabled, and you got the probe on one end, and you got your ambient temperature um, on the other end. Yeah. So you, it comes with you know you can get multiple um, probes, but it looks like a pen. You stick it in your meat, um, walk away, and everything's right there, which is uh-huh. nice. Um, you know your ambient temperature, you know right. your your grill te- your meat uh-huh. temperature. Because, yeah, the standard thermopen is instant read, right? You, it's instant read, but you can't leave a thermopen. No. You know. No. They must have products, though, at ThermoWorks. I haven't looked oh, yeah. at all. You know, I've seen the webpage with all kinds of stuff. They have tons of stuff. Yeah. I mean, stuff that I don't even know what to do with, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, the thermopen is just, it's that's the most universal. Yep. Um, that can do, you know, your sauces. That can do liquids, you know, oh, caramel, I candy, use it whatever. All the time in the kitchen, even mm-hmm. you know, reheating to make sure something's up to temperature. If you're reheating lasagna, whatever. 
yes. perfect for meats. Exactly. You know, I feel a lot more comfortable if I have very expensive steak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can get if a you temperature. Know that, yes. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's yeah. Very yeah, very expensive steaks. Yeah, so that, well, they're not inexpensive, but they're worth the investment because you only have to ruin a couple of very expensive steaks, and you could have bought one. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so, I mean, that's. Though I'd say those are pretty much the best apps out there. Um, I mean, there's a ton of apps. I grill. Um, you know, and most of those are recipes. Um, so, if you're looking for recipes, those are great. But like the Pit Pal is is an actual tool you know, for the pit master, um, yep. that, you know, grills, whatever. Um, and do you, do you see like competition people jumping on this app bandwagon or is this kind of home people that are, um, I mean, I'd probably say, uh, I'd probably say they do it. Yeah. I mean, even, I mean, I've been at some competitions, big competitions, um, and you'll see people go on their phones. You know, you'll see yeah. people Googling, Googling stuff quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, if they want to change something quick or, you know, if something happens, then, you know, their phone's right there. Pa panic sets in. Yes. <laughs> yep. Google is your friend. Yes. Oh, and the, the big pig jig um, was yeah. just happened, and uh, Heath Riles took grand champion. Awesome. So congratulations to him. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, but what else? Um, trying to think. I mean, the logbook, the apps. Um, what else you want to talk about, Ed? I don't know. We only got, you know, two or three minutes. Okay. So, you know. What, and what? if anybody wants to send us stuff, um, like Mike C. sent the barbecue sauces. Um, if anybody wants to send us stuff, you know, we can give you one of our addresses or you can send it to, um, can, you, can they send it to Studio 21 Podcast Cafe? Sure. Okay. Um, you know, you can even send stuff to Studio 21 Podcast yeah, just, Cafe in Salem. Um, but if you mark, want us to... Yeah, just market pit life and we'll know what to do with it. Yeah. And if you want us to try something or, you know, review something or, um, you know, if you just want to give us something. Um, you <laughs> You're know, always willing. We're always, yeah, we're always, we're here to help. Um, you know, I was talking to JD Pitmaster um, the other day and he's got a glaze that he wants to get out into market mm. he just doesn't you know hasn't hasn't really pulled the trigger yet um but again you know we're here to if you want to give me a call or if you want to call john yeah. or whatever um mm. we're here to help and, and i would you know i would uh, think people should send you ingredients so you can make me food and then i can analyze how good these glazes are sure or we should have jonathan to do the <laughs> chef jonathan <coughs> Oh, but yeah. Um, so you know, anything you guys want to send or or get our opinion of or whatever, let us know. Um, if you have anything that you want to hear on the show or next show, um, you know, this is it's all interactive and we're here for for you guys. So again, anything, let us know. But that is it for this week's show. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. Catch the audio wherever podcasts are found. Catch the video on Facebook, YouTube, whatever. The most important thing is YouTube. Go to YouTube, hit the subscribe button. You know, we're going to put up more videos on it. Um, we're trying to get the YouTube to grow. So, you know, hit the like, hit the rate, hit the share button. Um, we want to thank you guys again. Um, you know, it's because of you that we do this. So, um, you know, hope Johnny's getting better and hopefully he can be here next week. So we'll have a... Uh, better show and not a shit show um but again till next week keep the smoke rolling guys the views and opinions expressed by the hosts guests or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the studio 21 podcast cafe the united podcast network its partners or affiliates